I'm going first. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Good morning, and welcome to the United Launch Alliance News Conference. We're so pleased that you could join us today for a very exciting announcement. So with that, I'd like to introduce Tori Bruno, United Launch Alliance President and CEO. Tori. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Well, I'm very excited this morning. We're going to have fun today because you and I, right here in the next 10 minutes, are going to fundamentally change the way people acquire launch services. I am going to take an unprecedented level of transparency and knowledge, and I'm going to put it directly in the hands of people who want to go to space. From today forward, the customer is in the driver's seat. Now, I got to tell you, it is a challenge to be a commercial satellite operator. It is very difficult to come up with your business case and your plan and to select your launch service. There's an awful lot of guesswork in that 10 minutes ago. The first thing you have to do is go to a complicated technical manual. We call it a user's guide. You have to try and figure out what kind of rocket you're going to need. After you've done that, you don't really know what it's truly going to cost you until you have a big meaningful engagement with your potential provider. And then after that, you discover that the sticker price on the rocket is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole host of other costs. And I mean, it's really like buying a car. I mean, when you buy a car, you look at the sticker price, but you have to ask other questions to really understand the total cost of ownership. For example, you might ask, what's the insurance going to cost for this car? You know, what's the gas mileage? Is it a $20 oil change or a $200 oil change? Well, rocketry and space launch is exactly like that. It turns out that there is a cost associated with reliability, and it's manifested in the insurance rates you pay for your space launch. And depending on who you choose, the difference in that cost can be millions of dollars. It's significant. There's also a cost with schedule assurance or schedule reliability. You know, launch service providers, we're just like the airlines. Each of us has our own unique on-time record. And if you choose to go with a launch provider that has a poor record of being on time, then you're going to be exposed to costs. Your revenue stream that you're going to get from putting your commercial, say, telecommunications satellite, for example, on orbit, will be delayed or deferred. You might have to pay money to store and maintain your satellite while you're waiting for them. That can be millions of dollars. All of these are hidden. Now, there's also opportunities. Now, it turns out if you fly with United Launch Alliance on an Atlas, for example, um, you will be flying on a rocket that has very unique and sophisticated guidance. This is directly traceable to our missile heritage. And so now that that sort of sword has been pounded into that plowshare, when you fly with us, we would take you to a better orbit than you asked for. And on average, your satellite will live as much as two years longer. That's two more years of revenue being generated. It's two more years before you have to replace that satellite. And all of that has value. So when you're a commercial operator, it's very difficult to get clear transparency around all of these costs so that you can do meaningful trades and build a real business plan. But today, all that changes. We are going to provide a tool, we call it Rocket Builder, that is a very powerful online tool that anybody can go to and have instant, clear transparency around what the costs are, not just the sticker price of the rocket, but all of those other costs and what your true cost of going to space is going to be. And it makes it very easy to do trades very rapidly. So trade studies and comparisons that might have taken you weeks or months before can literally be done in minutes. So from this moment forward, that information will be transparent and clear. It will be easier to buy a ride in space than to get a plane ticket home for the holidays. This will be completely different. So in a few minutes, you and I are going to build some rockets together. I'm going to show you how the tool actually works. But first, I wanted to show you a video just to give you a little bit broader idea of what I'm talking about. So if you could go ahead and run that, please. In 
how you will purchase a ride to space. You can buy and build a rocket real time. The traditional procurement process for launch service industry is the most complex way of buying a service. We're actually transforming that entire process. You would come to the Rocket Builder website, you would enter in the specifications for your spacecraft. Payload fairing, where you want to go, how many solid rocket boosters you need. And in real time, the Rocket Builder website will build your rocket. You can use it on your cell phone, on your tablet, you can use it anywhere. It's not just for our customers, it's also a tool that will be available for educators and students and space enthusiasts. This is the first time that this level of pricing detail is available. It's going to also provide you financial information about the costs, not just of that rocket, but the savings that that rocket will provide you in comparison to the industry average. We'll have the purchase price there, but we also show you the other value elements that, that ULA provides that no one else does. Things like insurance savings and the value of starting your revenue stream sooner, having your satellite last longer, or be in a more precise or more effective orbit. If you're a commercial customer, it means you start generating revenue sooner. If you're NASA, you're getting science data back sooner. Value really is more than a price tag, and we mean that, and we're showing that. What we are bringing to the marketplace is the same great rocket, great track record of unmatched reliability, scheduled certainty, and orbit optimization that starts at $109 million. ULA has the best launch service in the world. It's the best product for getting a spacecraft in orbit that there is. We are now offering a tool that allows all users, all customers, to have access to that. It allows a customer to shop for a rocket to meet their exact mission needs and put their mission on orbit. We're excited to share that pricing publicly now with Rocket Builder. All right. You want to build a rocket? Yeah. Okay, let's build some rockets. All right, bring it up, please. I'm actually going to drive it in real time. So here we go. Let me find my cursor. Uh, where is it? I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, there it is. Let me look on the other screen. So this is the landing page. And you could scroll down. There's some other videos here that sort of reinforce some of these concepts we talked about. But I think what we want to do is just get right to it and build a rocket. So we click on that button. Now, traditionally, and in, in pretty much with everybody else, you need to buy your ride to space about two or three years ahead of time, because that's how long it takes to build a rocket and then get you fitted on, a, on the manifest. So you, know, you might be looking at a launch date here, or maybe even like that. But remember, we just released rapid launch. So if you wanted to, you literally could go next quarter. That's something new from ULA. So we'll start out by picking that. And this tool is actually connected to our manifest. If there is not an available launch slot, you would not be able to choose it on here. So we start with that. Then you got to tell us where you're going. So, you know, you could go to, you know, geosynchronous orbit, directly injected. You can see the picture over here is sort of telling us what's happening. You know, you could be a sun synchronous orbit. Say you were in an Earth observation satellite like Worldview and you wanted to take a picture or an image of the Earth at the same time every day. That would be the kind of orbit you would use. In this case, I think for the first example, we're going to be the most common trip to space, which is a geosynchronous transfer orbit, which is what is typically used by communi communication satellites on their way out to geo. So we pick our orbit. Then we've got to ask you or you would tell us, hey, you know, how big is my satellite? So this comes up and it says, well, let's, let's do a small class communication satellite. So about 3.5 metric tons. We could put any size in here we wanted. But Rocket Builder has the user's guide, the technical manual behind it. You don't have to fuss with that. It's already designed your rocket for you. And so here's an Atlas 401. And you could come up here really quickly and check the fairing to make sure you're going to fit underneath our fairing and we could say oh yes we do we're fine here at four meter or perhaps we wouldn't and we could move to a four meter law you know medium or even the jumbo fairing but for our example the most common is in fact the four meter fairing for that kind of mission so you would pick all of that now here at the bottom of the screen every time you make a choice it's pricing your rocket for you I'm going to come back to that in a little bit later. Now there's some other options. This is kind of like going to Ford or Chevy and building your car. It's intended to be that easy. 
So here are some of the options you would pick. So you could start with the core service. That means that you are going to bring your adapter ring to attach your satellite to our rocket. It's a standard interface, and you're going to do your own payload processing. That's most common for this class of satellite. You might need more. There are more services you could get. You can see all these different options, and you can choose one of those. And if you look to the bottom of the page, you can see how the price is changing while you do that. So you're able to make value choices in real time. I can pull up this big comparison slide. It might be a little bit hard to read in the back. But you know these are the options along the top. And there's that core option in the first column. You might be somebody who says, golly, you know, I want to have my own onboard camera looking at my spacecraft during flight. And then you would pick you know, the, the signature service. Or you know, I want you, ULA, to arrange for the satellite payload processing and all the adapters and things like that. We can do that. And those are different options. So that's sort of how that works. So let's go back to where we were. Again, we'll stick with the core for our first pass through the tool. And then you would roll down. There's some optional things. There's this mission insight, for example. You might want to say, I am just really, really glued to my experience here. I literally want to move into your facility with you. We'll give you an office. You can be in the factory. You can be at the launch site. You can be with us literally every step of the way. Or maybe this is a great marketing opportunity for your company. It's your coming out party. You're offering a new service. There's nothing like a rocket launch for that. And so we could help you with that. You could pull up this particular option. And you know, we could give you a VIP experience for 100 of your customers and investors. You know, they could come out and tour the factory in the control room and be on the pad. You know, we'll put them in rocket hats and stuff like that. You know, whatever you would find useful, press engagements, whatever. So that would be something you could buy. And behind all of these is a lot of market research on what typically customers buy together. Okay. And then finally, you get to the bottom on this first pass through, and you say, OK, sticker price is $109 million for that commercial Atlas 401. That right there is amazing. You've never seen a price for an Atlas like this before. This is a result of our ongoing transformation and really making space more accessible and knocking those costs down. That in itself is shocking. But that's not the story. There's this other number here, 65 million bucks. Remember I said it's not just the sticker price. There's a whole host of these other costs, these hidden costs. Well, if you buy an Atlas by someone else's rocket, you will save another 65 million on those other costs. That's what that represents. And you might say, wow, that's a giant number. I mean, where'd that come from? Well, you can click on this little button here, and you can walk through it. So the first is the reliability. And so you could come in here, and you could say, well, you know, the typical type of spacecraft in this class is about $300 million. That's market research. And we've gone out to the insurance community to find out what insurance costs. And if you fly with the industry average, Vice ULA, when you pick ULA and fly in an Atlas, you'll save about $12 million on your insurance cost. I mean, that's real money. And oh, by the way, these numbers you can adjust. So you might say, well, my spacecraft doesn't cost $300 million. I've got a really inexpensive one. Maybe it's only, you know, $200 million bucks. So we can knock that down. And lo and behold, well, you're not saving as much money on insurance for a less expensive spacecraft. Or here, let's uh, maybe we have a little bit more expensive spacecraft. You know, it could be 400 million bucks, and you're saving more money when you do that. But for our case, I think we'll just leave it back at three for now, first time through. So that's real money, and that's real cost out of your pocket up front. Then the schedule thing we talked about, same kind of thing. So as it turns out, the industry average for your on-time record is about being five months late. ULA is always under two weeks from the date you contracted to when you go to space. So on average, if you purchase from somebody else, you'll be about four and a half months after the date that you agreed upon. That means you're deferring your revenue. So the example we picked was a typical communication satellite in this weight class. 
you know, the way a communication satellite earns money is it has transponders on it, little radios, and they're communicating with the Earth. There's, they typically generate an average of about $150,000 a month in revenue. 40 of them is pretty typical for this weight class. That's six million bucks a month of revenue that you're not getting until you get to space for an average of this kind of time. Okay, and then of course, you may have to store and maintain your satellite while you're waiting for your rocket. So there's an expense there. This is typical, about a million a month. We left this one zero in the default, but some operators make obligations to their customers that come with penalties if they're late, so that can be added. And again, all of these numbers can be changed to the specific circumstances if an operator thinks they know a different number for their situation. This is average, this is typical. And typically, if you fly with someone else, the net present value of waiting for your money to start is worth about 23 million bucks, real money. And then finally, this issue of orbit optimization. I mentioned that we have very unique and sophisticated guidance technology in our rockets. We will take you to a better orbit than you asked for. The Centaur and the Atlas lower stage measure their own performance during flight. You will have told us what a better orbit looks like to you. Could be higher, could be at a different inclination than you actually asked for. And we will take the performance that we get on that actual rocket and during flight autonomously reprogram our flight profile and take you to a better orbit than you asked for. And typically, over the history of our 113 successful launches, for this kind of mission, you get about two years more life because of that. That's two years more revenue. That's two years more time before you have to buy another satellite to replace it. That's also worth money. And once again, you can change that. You can make it zero. I mean, there are operators that would say, well, you know, I don't really want the extra time because I like to refresh the technology on my payload. That's fine, too. There's both kinds of folks. So you could customize these and come back here, and it would update them. But the bottom line is the true total cost of going to space is more than the sticker price on the rocket. And when you account for these other things, Rocket Builder helps you understand that really your net cost is only $44 million. I mean, that's a shocking number really exciting. And so that was interesting, but the real power is the ability to do rapid trades. So let's come back up here to the rocket type. So let's say you've run through it once and you go, well, that's interesting, 109 sticker price, additional savings of 65. You know, what if I think my market is projecting the potential for growth. I could have more transponders. Maybe I want to move up from a small class to, say, a medium class spacecraft. So I'm going to put in 4.7 metric tons. Look at that. It didn't change the price because it's the same rocket. Well, that's pretty cool. So maybe that's worth that investment. So you may make that a run. Then you get really liquored up and you go, wow, that's great. Let me add a few more transponders. You know, more transponders is more revenue. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it up another couple of hundred pounds and see what happens. Voila, it instantly redesigned the rocket for you. It added a solid SRB. Now the price went up, of course. You know, that might be OK, because you're paying more up front, but you're also generating more revenue. You get to make that decision as an operator, and you got to make it in real time. So now that's a third run. So now you're saying, well, now let me get really fancy. Maybe I'm going to save some weight. I'll invest in electric propulsion on my spacecraft, and I can save maybe 100 pounds of propellant and come back down again. And look at that. Maybe I'll do a little bit more and get back down to the same original rocket. I'm back down to $109 million, but I, you know, I better check my payload fairing because all that additional electric propulsion might want a bigger solar panel, and it turns out I don't fit anymore, so perhaps I have to jump all the way out to a jumbo you know, nose fairing, the five meter, and the price comes up, and you say, okay, it costs more, but again, I'm generating more revenue. We just, you and I together, went through about three to four weeks of trade studies in what was that, five minutes? This is an incredible empowerment that we are handing to a spacecraft operator, to a customer, 
to do trades optimized between the launch service and their whole business plan before they've even picked up the phone. This is really a game changer. And it's all about providing this transparency that has heretofore not ever been available. So let's say we fall in love with that one. That's the one we want. So we come back down. There we are, $130 million sticker price, saving $65 million because you're on an atlas overflying with the average of the rest of the industry. So your true cost is really only 65, and that's pretty much upfront money. So that's, that's the real number. You know, you could save that to your browser so you don't lose it. You don't want to lose that one. You might want to get a good look at that rocket. It's going to cost you a few million dollars. So you can load this little tool to help you visualize it. You can move it around. That's kind of fun. It's a great educational tool, by the way, as well. This is open to anybody. You can snap off a spec sheet because you're going to want to have a handful of these so you can go back to your boss and explain why you picked the one you did. Here it is. I think it appeared down here. There you go. Congratulations. You've just built the most reliable rocket in the world. So we can come back up here and get back to where we were. And then when we're done with the presentation in the Q&A, in the back of the room, we've got some iPads and some phones. This is on any device. You can use this. You're going to feel very empowered when you get done. And you know, a commercial Atlas launch is sold through our partner, you know, Lockheed Martin Commercial Launch Services. They are here with me right now. Steve, would you stand up and wave at the folks so they can see you? I wanted you to see Steve because after you've played with the tool, you're going to get so excited you want to buy a rocket. <laughs> and so Steve is here with his order book. You know, and you, when you're done here, you just, you know, you click on this uh, Amazon Prime one-click button. The rocket will show up the next day at your, uh, at your facility. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So you come in and you give us your contact information. We call you back the next day, and then, you know, Steve will get with you, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll get you a ride to space. And, of course, if, if you're back here on the website and it turns out you want something a little different than you see in the various service options. That's not a problem. You just let us know by clicking that button and you know, we'll design whatever ride to space you need. But this is a real game changer. So all of that guesswork and all of that murkiness that an operator has to go through to figure out what their launch service is and how that balances against the choices they make on their spacecraft, that is a thing of the past. I mean, from this moment forward, it is going to be easier to get your ride to space than that plane ticket home for the holidays. And I'm pretty excited about that. So with that, I think we're available to take questions. Sure, we'll go ahead and take questions. Just state your name and affiliation and wait for the microphone. We'll start here in the front with Jeff. Hi, Jeff Bow, Space News. This is applying only to commercial launches. If you're a government customer, can you use Rocket Builder as well? Yeah, so this, these pricings are what would typically be asked for by a commercial customer. And so if you're a government uh, customer, there are other requirements that you have that are not represented here. So for example, you know, I mean, if you're the Air Force and you're buying a one-of-a-kind, classified, billion-dollar satellite upon which lives depend, there's a whole bunch of additional things that you're going to need from us. You're going to need classified facilities. You're going to need... Uh, accounting systems and disclosures and data that you are charged with on behalf of the taxpayer to sort of be involved and make decisions. That's not here. These are commercial prices. So the difference is typically between 30 and 80 million dollars depending on what the government needs on top of this kind of work. But as a trade study tool to help them make choices around architecture and requirements, I think this is also very useful. Hi, Pat Host with Defense Daily. Uh, when are we going to be able to buy a Vulcan launch online? Oh, that's cool. So Vulcan pricing will be available late next year. And as Vulcan becomes available, you'll see it added to the, uh, to the website, and you'll be able to buy your Vulcan ride to space. Hi, um, obviously this is focused on uh, uh, transparency and making it easier to understand what uh, the rocket costs, but is there also behind this um, any other like affordability initiatives? Have you driven down the cost or 
uh, change the way that you assign value to different pieces of, of the launch? Well, let me start with the first part of the question. Um, why yes, just a handful of years ago an Atlas 401 sold for $184 million a launch service. So 109 is a pretty big change. And that is a result of an entire company transformation that we have been going through. We have entered into strategic partnerships in our supply chain and achieved vast savings there. We have streamlined our operations, taking advantage of our 10 years of experience. It now takes half as long to build a rocket in our factory and only a third the amount of time to integrate that at the pad with a spacecraft and launch it. And of course, time is money, so that's savings, but it's also a tremendous enabler behind things like rapid launch. The idea that you don't have to wait three years to go to space, that you can go in three months, is also enabled by some of these activities we just talked about. We'll go right up here, Chris. I'm Philip Swartz, also with Space News. Uh, I was hoping you could explain a little bit more about the possibility of uh, sharing, hosting multiple payloads on a single launch and how the website works to tell you uh, if there is space available and how much space is available. Ah, sure. So the, the question was about multiple payloads and hosting. So the website doesn't address that specifically as multiple payloads, but the way you would understand that is by coming back here and giving us the total weight of your combined payload. And so, for example, let's say we're going to do a big satellite and a little satellite. Maybe we're going to get this number all the way up to, so let's pick a number, seven and a half metric tons. And it would design that rocket for you, poof, in real time. You instantly know that you're looking at, you know, a 4SRB version of that. You're going to have to go with the large payload fairing to accommodate them. And then for that combined lift, you can divide it any way you want between the two payloads. Sometimes the two payloads are from one customer. Sometimes two customers will get together, and they will split that cost. And of course, down at the bottom, there you are, 145 million. You're still saving 65 in this example. We would probably have bigger savings because it won't be $300 million worth of two satellites. That'll be a bigger number. And then uh, you'd be in a position to you know, click on the one click buy button and Steve will get you fixed up. All right, let's go ahead back to Pat and then we'll take some questions from Ask ULA. Thanks. Um, I noticed the, uh, the added value was uh, very interesting. What percentage of your revenues are the added value and the add-ons for your launches? So, let's see, so you're asking me in general, for commercial lifts, how much of the total revenue would probably come from that? Is that the question? Yep. Yeah, I would estimate about a third. Do you expect that to potentially increase with the advent of the rocket builder? Actually, I think that people will be in a better position to understand what they're buying and make their own trades, and overall their costs will go down. Our launch rate will go up as a result, but for them, I think space will be more affordable. Because for the first time, they're gonna have crystal clear insight as to what that thing that they have asked for in the past actually costs. And they can make a decision that in the past really wasn't available to them to make. All right, ask you all Yes, I have a question from Daniel Carter on Twitter. How does ULA see itself competing with other companies in the future, and what are your future goals? Well, sure. So, first off, I'd say those numbers speak for themselves. I mean, $80 million for an Atlas, you know, 541 is, is pretty impressive. Took those two dual payloads up in our example. So I think this makes a very compelling and competitive argument when you're finally able to see the true total cost of lift. And as we introduce our new rocket with the American engine, the Vulcan rocket, and eventually its ACES upper stage, um, this, you know, this offering becomes so much more capable and s even so much more affordable. Another question from Ask ULA. So what does having this website available mean for competition? Can they use it to, um, 
to to understand the competitive advantage? How do, what does this mean? Aren't we getting rid of our competitive advantage? So our competitive advantage is inherently built in to our reliability and our schedule certainty. That's where the big numbers came from, as well as this orbit optimization. And so, you know, I would say that nobody really chooses to have low reliability, to blow their rocket up, or to be late. Uh, it, you know, it, it's something that they strive to avoid, but it's very difficult to obtain, and it takes a great deal of experience and process discipline and know-how to achieve this. These are durable differentiators. And what we're doing here is making them visible to customers so they can make an informed choice. Someday, I expect the rest of the industry will become as reliable as we are. We will have new differentiators for you then. We'll come back to the room. Do you foresee any sort of uh, tracking in the future with this website five years from now? Or are we going to be able to look at what rockets were ordered and sort of how much they cost? I hadn't thought of that. I don't know. Good question. Courtney? Hi, yes, I know, I know you sort of answered this before, but can, can you talk more about the potential implications for um, uh, government launch possibly? I, I don't know if something like this could impact, um, I don't know, acquisition timelines, you know, having better access to these types of trades, um, even though it doesn't include the, the total cost of government launch. And then also, do you foresee maybe um, someday adding that feature to this just to allow allow people to better understand um, the, the cost of some of those, um, you know, additional requirements, um, you know, in the, in the future? Sure. Well, I, I do. So in both cases, I think this is tremendously empowering for our government customers because they are able, just like a commercial customer is able, to do rapid trades and understand the implications of their decisions and their choices relative to the spacecraft or to a launch date. So all of that is helpful even though they are essentially missing an option for a set of things that they require for a government mission to be priced in. Long-term vision, yes, I absolutely do imagine working with the government customers to be able to understand and package up those types of needs that they have and put them on here so that they can do the same kind of thing where they can choose to have a certain level of insight or they can choose to have a certain level of security and understand immediately what that costs them. Can I ask a follow up? Um, you know, as, as the government market becomes more, um, becomes, you know, competitive, um, has, has this, um, the process of developing this tool helped ULA better articulate um, the value that it, that it brings in that market as new competitors, um, you know, enter that, that world? Yes, it does. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay in the room for questions. Do we have another from Ask ULA? OK, another question coming in from the internet. Um, how did you come up with the insurance savings value reflected on the website? By going out to the insurance industry and finding out what people are charged. Simple as that. All right, do we have any more questions in the room? We'll go to Jeff. <clears throat> yeah, I was curious if you have built in any sort of uh, lower prices or, or changes down further down the road, if, if you're projecting further down a few years down the road, see how far out you could uh, uh, buy a launch from. Will it always be 109 million, or if I try to buy a launch in 2019 or 2020, might I get an even better deal? Prices are gonna get lower over time. They absolutely are. So you have a choice to make if you're an operator. Do you want to take a chance and wait a year or two to see if the prices are lower? The downside of that is there are a limited number of slots, and they, they will get sold, and then so you, they may not be available to you. But yes, this is an ongoing journey in making space more affordable, more accessible, while maintaining that reliability. You know, if I touch on that a little bit more, sort of coming back to the question about insurance, you know, there is a big difference in the value of reliability between ULA and the rest of the industry. The average outside ULA is you know, about one t failure in 10, and that's how it has been for about 20 years. In certain cases, it's even higher. You might say two in 11. 
we are now at 113. So we are at zero and 113. That is a giant difference in reliability and it's reflected in insurance rates. Yes. Hi, Ellen Mitchell with Politico. I was just wondering, when did ULA start developing this tool? Oh gosh, about a year ago. Was it maybe spurned on by non-traditional commercial companies coming into the market such as SpaceX? So this is really part of this big mission we're on to make space more accessible. And it was one of the first goals that I set when I came to ULA in every dimension, not just making space more affordable, not just doing things like our CubeSat initiative where eventually every atlas has a CubeSat carrier that has free slots for universities in STEM, but also transparency, making it visible. So it's really about that longer term vision of seeing space become more available to people in more and more economic activity in space. Any more questions from the room? All right, thank you for that. I'll turn it back to Tori. All right, so now that we're done with Q&A, before I turn you loose to play with this stuff, I thought I'd mention that it also happens to be our 10 year anniversary. And so we've got a nice short little video sort of celebrating that. And if, if you would bear with me for a moment, we'd love to share that with you. So if you could run that, please. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the 7th GPS-2F satellite for the United States Air Force. Rocket people like us never get tired of looking at that stuff. <laughs> so we're going to hang around for a little while while you play with the tool if you like. You can use our equipment. You can use your own smartphone, rocketbuilder.com. And uh, if you have any other questions that you think of while you're doing that, we'll be here to answer them. So thank you. Okay. Thanks. You got your order book, right? I'm ready to go. <laughs>